Do not trust in him is your only way to salvation, and you will be judged by him in your own righteousness, and you will be found wanting, and you will be cast into the lake of fire, and this is eternal conscious torment. But I'm not here with a message of condemnation, for Jesus Christ, the Son of God, did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's John 3, 17. Everyone's heard John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but inherit eternal life. But how many of you have heard John 3, 17? For the Son of God, for the Son did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yes, sir. He came to save those which were lost came to seek and save the lost and he did that on Calvary's cross when he laid down his life for the sins of mankind all those made in the likeness and image of God all those fearfully and wonderfully made by the Lord God of Israel and Jesus Christ is the Lord God of Israel yes. he is the most high God come in the flesh he's the second person of the Trinity if you will truly trust in him and what he did on Calvary's cross and that he rose from the dead for your justification, and that alone for your salvation. We will be saved. Again, saved from what? The wrath of God. What is the wrath of God? The wrath of God is hell, and then the lake of fire. For those who have not trusted in Jesus Christ and him alone for your salvation or their salvation. So I come here as a simple servant. And you know, the word minister means servant. I'm a servant of the Most High God. By his grace, for his glory. I'm not here to condemn anyone i'm here to point people to jesus i'm nothing more than a beggar that has found bread who is the bread who is that bread or what is that the bread is jesus christ the bread of life jesus said in john 6 35 i am the bread of life he said he that cometh to me shall never hunger and he that believes on me shall never thirst and he said in john 647 verily verily i say unto you he that believes on me hath everlasting life yes. hath everlasting life so if you believe on the lord jesus christ you will have everlasting life that is life without end it'll never come to an end you'll pass from death to life you'll pass from judgment into a right standing with god and you will when you die as we all will You'll stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and he'll tell you, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into my Father's kingdom or enter into my rest. This isn't about skin color because we're all made in the likeness and image of God. We're all fearfully and wonderfully made. We all have the same intrinsic worth and value in the eyes of our creator. And Jesus Christ is our creator. Make no mistake about that. Amen. His very name, Yeshua, in Hebrew means salvation. That is who he is. He is salvation itself. And I know I can testify to the transformative power of the Holy Spirit that is sent to those. He, the Holy Spirit, who is the third person of, Trin of the Trinity, is sent to those who truly, from the heart, I mean, those who confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in their heart that God hath raised them from the dead, those are the people that will be saved. It's very simple. What is the will of God? That you believe on the one that the Father hath sent and that is Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah of Israel, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, and the beginning and the end, who is going to come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. His reign will have no end. He is the divine Son of God. He is the, the Christ, the Son of the living God. He is the Son of Man, the divine Son of Man, uh, written about in Daniel chapter 7. He's at the right hand of the Ancient of Days. He began in the dominion and, and power and glory and people are going to bow down and worship him that's the lord jesus christ that's what we call jesus all these various belief systems out here that preach the message or propagate the idea that you can get to heaven by your good works or by the things you do um, whether it's by fasting or alms giving giving money or giving stuff to the poor or helping those in need or it's any anything that has to do with what you have to do um, so we call that work salvation. You know, Islam is a form of work salvation. Judaism is a form of work salvation. The Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, the, and I'm going to say it, the Catholic Church preaches work salvation. It's only by trusting in Jesus Christ and Him alone and His salvation and His death, burial, and resurrection will you inherit eternal life. 
that's it. Apart from that, there is no hope but an expectation of judgment, as I've already stated. Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So if you follow Jesus, if you trust in him, you'll have the light of life. You'll, you won't be deceived. You won't walk in darkness, but you'll walk in light. In John 10, Jesus said, I am the gate, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. He said in John 10.10, 10, The thief cometh not, that's Satan, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And we can see that happening around here. The enemy has his clutches on this place, but Jesus has come to set the captives free for each one of us. God bless you. We're out here proclaiming the gospel. I'm out here to preach a message of good news. That's what the gospel means. It means good news, the evangelion. That the Son of God has become a man, died for your sins, risen from the dead on your behalf, and if you trust in that and that alone, you will be saved from the wrath of God. But Jesus said, I am come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus said in John 10, 11, and 10, 14, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So if you belong to Christ, he has given his life for you, and he has given you eternal life. So he laid down his life for you on Calvary's cross, and if you trust in him, you'll inherit eternal life. That's life without end. Jesus said, as recorded in John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. That means if you trust in Jesus, you can't lose your salvation. He won't allow you to fall away. He won't allow you to perish. He won't allow you to die. He won't allow you to go astray. Because apart from God's grace, each one of us are going to go astray. In fact, we have gone astray. And we see in Isaiah chapter 53... Which is one of the more prominent proof texts that Jesus is the Messiah. That, and, and one of those Old Testament texts that clearly points to Jesus as the Messiah. It says the following. Okay. Bear with me, please. Almost there. We got the Roman numerals in this Bible. <laughs> this is an original King James Bible. This is a 1611 edition. No joke. Okay, I got it. So I'm going to read Isaiah 53. I'm going to read the whole thing. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness, or beauty. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. When he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes... We are healed. God. And this is why I turned to Isaiah 53 to begin with. This verse right here, which talks about it, says the following. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. So, all sins, iniquities, and transgressions, every vile thing that you've thought, said, or done has been laid on Jesus Christ for all time. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. You. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, because he never lied. There was no guile in him. Yes. He's the purest man that ever lived. Fully God, fully man. 
But he was fully man, tempted in every way as we are, in every way that we are, but without sin. Yes, sir. Without violating the law of Almighty God, which is his law. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Why did it please the Lord to bruise him? Because it would reconcile the human race to the Father. That's why. And it could only happen through the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's the only way. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. This is Jesus. He's satisfied at the sacrifice that Amen. because of the, the harvest that was brought into the kingdom. That, that Because of the souls that were saved, that were plucked as fires from, as brands from the fire. Excuse Ooh, Jesus. Me, as brands from the fire. And that's each one of us out here today. We have been plucked as brains from the fire. None of us are out here because we're good, uh, are preaching the word of God, or we're saved, we have the spirit of God dwelling within us, because we're good, or we're worthy of God's grace. We're not. That's what grace means. It's, it's unmerited favor, first and foremost. And then when you're saved by the grace of God, and even before that, it is it is divine influence upon the human heart. That's how we, we came to Christ, because it says in John 6, 44, that a and it's the Father that draws us to Jesus. Thank you. We didn't come to Him in our own power. Amen, because we're brother. Dead in, apart from God's grace, His salvific grace, apart from Christ, we're dead in our trespasses and sins. And our righteousness is as filthy rags. You know what that, in the Hebrew, it's a menstrual cloth. It's a dirty menstrual cloth. That's what the a prophet Isaiah is actually talking about. Um, that's how filthy our righteousness is, apart from our, our self-righteousness, apart from Jesus Christ and His righteousness that covers those that put their trust in Jesus Christ and His death, burial, and resurrection alone for their salvation. Thank you. Okay. So, it's a privilege and a blessing and an honor to be out here today. Uh, this was short notice. Brother Pastor Dan, Bishop Dan Ramosoto, invited me to come out here. And I normally preach at the bus terminal on the North Clinton section downtown, but any opportunity I, I have or any opportunity presented to me or any, any opportunity I can to come out and, and uplift the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring glory to his name, I'm going to take advantage of that even if that means me being beaten up or killed. I don't care because my life is not my own. Uh, it's, I belong to Jesus because I was bought with a price. I was purchased by his precious blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. And you can also be in that same position. You, that can also be you if you trust in Jesus. Amen. Thank you. And Him alone for your salvation. Don't put any trust in your good works because your good works apart from Christ are not accepted by God. They mean nothing to Him. Like I said, they're filthy rags. They're as clean or pure as a menstrual cloth, which is a dirty, filthy thing. Okay. So... In John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, Jesus said unto her, he's talking to Martha, one of the sisters of Lazarus, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? That's the question. Do you believe this? If you believe this, then you will be raised unto life unto life eternal because as it says in John chapter 5 and this is one of my favorite chapters in all of scripture because it lays out who Jesus is I'm going to read several verses starting in verse 20 for the father loveth the son and showeth him all things that himself doth and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel for as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. So Jesus has the power and the authority to raise the dead or quicken whom he wills and give them eternal life. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. That means that on the day of judgment, Jesus is the one that's going to be judging us, whether you're a saint or you're outside of the body of Christ. You're not a part of his bride, and you're standing at the 
the great white throne judgment. And that's a fearful thing. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Yes, yes. And Jesus is the living God. And he's Amen. going to judge each and every one of us for every thought, word, and deed we've ever had. If you're in Christ, then all is well. You're justified. Meaning you're made, that means that in Christ, you've been made right in the eyes of God. And you're cast from death to life. And there is no judgment. You're cast from judgment. Okay, so in Christ. So, verse 23. No, this, yeah, this is one of my top five favorite verses in all of Scripture. That all men should honor the Son, that's Jesus, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. So if you say you honor God, but you don't recognize that Jesus is God, that he's equal with the Father, then you don't honor God. You're a liar. And that, that is directly pointed at the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons who say they honor Jesus Christ, but don't recognize him as equal with the Father. Which, according to Jesus, he is equal with the Father. And verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, that's the word of Jesus Christ, and believeth on him that sent me. So you believe in the Father who had sent Jesus, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. So if you trust in Jesus, that means you're trusting in his Father. That means you're going to pass from death unto unto life and that's life eternal in heaven and then the the new earth and the new jerusalem okay verily verily this is verse 25 i say unto you the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of god that's jesus and they that here shall live yes sir for as the father hath life in himself so hath he given to the son to have life in himself and hath given him authority verse 27 so I'll go back to verse 26. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. So Christ has life in himself, and he has the power to give life to whomever he wills. He can raise anyone from the dead. Only God can do that. Not a mere man or a mere prophet. No matter how exalted a prophet he may be, he's still nothing but a man. But Jesus is more than, more than a prophet. More than I mean, he is the prophet. He is the prophet like unto Moses that Moses prophesied would come. But he's more than that. He's greater than that. He's greater than David. He's greater than Abraham. He's yes. greater than Amen. all of the, the patriarchs and the figures of the Old Testament. Greater than Moses. He's, he's greater than everyone who's ever lived. He is the divine son of God. He is the son of man. And he is the savior of mankind. In verse 27, and hath given him, that is the Father hath given Jesus authority to execute judgment. Again, Jesus is the judge on judgment day. God bless so you. Christians, he's going to bring the judge at the beam of Jesus. Okay, that's the mercy seat of Christ, and that's when he rolls out or gives out rewards to those that have faithfully served him while in the body. To those that are outside of Christ, outside of the body of Christ, they will be at the white, great white throne judgment. And they'll be judging their own righteousness and then cast into the lake of fire because they did not trust in Christ and they don't have his righteousness covering them. And their sins were not forgiven. Your sins are still on you if you don't trust in Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, the Son of Almighty God, who lived a sinless life that you and I could never live. He paid the price for our sins. He took upon himself on Calvary's cross yes. after living a perfect life, obeying every law of God, fulfilling the law of God, completing the law of God. He took upon all the sins, iniquities, and transgressions of each one of us, our, our evil thoughts, words, and deeds. He took them on himself, on the tree, on Calvary, on Golgotha. And then, and the wrath of God was poured out upon him. You know, in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus cries, you know, Lord, let it take this cup from me, but not my will, but your will be done. He's not afraid of crucifixion. It's just that it's the wrath of God. It's the wrath of his father that he was not looking forward to. It wasn't being crucified. It wasn't being scourged. He knew all of He knew that was going to happen. He knew it. I don't know when he figured this out. At some point in time in his life, he came to the realization of what he had come to do. And the reality is he knew he was going to die for the sins of the world. 
he knew what that was going to cost him, separation from his father for at least a time. And this is something that had never taken place in all of eternity, in all an eternity past. Jesus had never been separated from his father. But because God cannot look upon sin, he had to turn away from his son, turn away from looking upon his son and his, and his grace being upon his son. And, and Jesus said, in reiterating uh, Psalm 22, 1, Jesus said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because the wrath of God, had, 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 because the sins of the world had been placed on Jesus, and God's wrath had been placed on Jesus, to pay for the penalty of our sins, or the penalty of, yes, the penalty of our sins and iniquities and transgressions, and therefore God had to look away from his son as a result. And that's why Jesus said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Amen. But it's, it's just, it's a beautiful message, you know, uh, that God Almighty would become a man and die for our sins and, and make us right in the sight, in his sight, in the sight of his Father. Um, we're completely undeserving of this fact. We're completely undeserving of this free gift. We're completely undeserving of the grace of God. And so... Um, I don't have much more to say here. I'm going to wrap it up. But Jesus said, again, in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. He said in John 15, 5, and John 15, 1, and John 15, 5, that he's the true vine, and apart, apart from him, we can do nothing. And that means nothing that pleases the Father, nothing that pleases God. And so... And I'm going to read that. John uh, 15, 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So in Christ, we bring forth great fruit. Works that please the Father. Works that come from the Father. So that's the thing. When you put your trust in Christ, it's God that empowers you to do good things. So you're not saved by good works. You're Amen. saved unto do unto good works. You're saved to do good works. And it's inevitable that you're going to do that in Christ. Okay. So real quick here. Let's see. And John 14, 7. I already said John 14, 6. And, and that is I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 7 says the following. reads as such. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. That means if you know Christ, you know the Father. If you put your trust in Christ, the Spirit of God is sent to you to dwell within you because your body then becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. And then both the Father and the Son make their abode with you as well. So all I'll say today is put your trust in Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection alone for your salvation. You will be saved yes. from the wrath of God that is going to be poured out at some point in time in the future. You don't want to be found wanting on that day of judgment. You don't want to, you don't want to trust your own righteousness, your own good deeds, your own works. And I can tell you that my life has been transformed by Jesus. I was saved seven years ago. My life has never been the same. And I used to mock street preachers. Now I'm out here doing open-air evangelism. The Lord has a, an ironic sense of humor, um, but he is a good, good father. Amen. He's a good, good God. God. So, and I'll say this, that these last two verses, Jesus said, Marvel not at this, for their hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. That's verse 28, John 5, 28. And John 5, 29 says this, And shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Are you going to be one of those that is raised to life or raised and condemned? It's up to you today. If you've heard the word of God, don't harden your heart, but trust in Jesus and, only, and the salvation that only he offers. And I'm telling you, your life will be transformed. It will never be the same. Thank you for listening, and I'll just say this. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord Jesus Christ make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord Jesus Christ lift up his countenance upon you and place his peace within you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his glory, shalom. And that means peace, completeness, and wholeness to each person who hears this message. Amen. For Jesus' glory. Hallelujah. Brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Greetings, friends. Jesus Christ came to save the world. He knew before he even came to the planet, he was God. He knew what he was going to do ahead of time. They had a plan. They didn't fail at Genesis. You know, in the book of Genesis, where Adam and Eve, when they began, he had a plan for mankind. Before the foundation of the world. God knows what he is doing. Amen, Nothing, no, Satan tried to defeat the plan. He came in the garden. Adam and Eve listened to the serpent instead of to Jesus Christ. And they walked ahead in the relationship with him. They were separated because they tried to take of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which they were forbidden to do. There was a tree of life in the midst, and they never said, don't touch the tree. But instead of accepting God as the Savior, they wanted to go their own way. And this world, ever since, has been going their own way. They haven't been going God's way. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I was saying, salvation is of God. And he had it planned. It was before the foundation of the world. And Paul said, it was revealed to him from on high. He went into the wilderness. He didn't go with men. He didn't seek after flesh. He, he seeked after God. He went there. He, he didn't go to the apostles. He went in Egypt and he was praying to, about what his will, what it was done when, when Christ called him and knocked him off the horse. The apostle Paul and he was going on the way, persecuting people, and he was knocked down. And then they was, was sent to, to heal his eyes. And he saw Jesus and he said to him, Who are you that kicks against the pricks? And he said, it's I, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was told that all the things he must suffer for. So the foundation of the world, the gospel was known, and Paul was explaining it to the Romans and, and Philippians, all the books of, that Paul wrote, all the letters to the churches. He was showing what God's plan was about salvation. And they put the foundation of the world, it worked. So by grace and you say that not of yourselves, but gift of God in Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For we are his workmanship, created on the, on the good works. God, before his foundation of the world, planned that we would be doing works. And he, the works is we get salvation, but his salvation is, is working out the plan of God. God knows what he is doing. And all the scriptures that are in my mind, it comes, only God can put it. We put our trust not in flesh. Oh, we put our trust in the living God, the Almighty God who came. And He loves everybody. He's not here to condemn anybody. If anybody ends up in the lake of fire, it's because they choose to go there. If they don't listen to God when He's saying, Here I am, I've come to give you life and give it more abundantly. It is free. He says, Come drink of the water. The waters are free. So it doesn't cost any money. Why are you spending money for that which doesn't profit? It says in Isaiah 55. Why are you going around trying to get something? By your works, why don't you come to me and I'll give it to you freely. The hardest thing to do is to believe God means what he's saying. Men lie to you, but God never lies. He tells you, I'm with you, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. If you walk in my path, I will be with you to the end, from beginning to end. And Paul was willing to die for what he believed in. He lived, he stood on it. God said, I will show you what you're going to suffer. And people were telling, don't go to Jerusalem, you're going to suffer. But Jesus Christ said to go that way. These people were trying to make you say, don't make sad. I'm willing to die in Rome. And Paul preached the gospel for people. And he had his word. He knew what he was doing. Thank you, God, for what, we, what we're doing now. We, we aren't afraid to die for God, but we're not afraid to live for God. Woo, we give hey, ourselves 100% preach it, to minister. God. We will conquer. We will do. We are more than conquerors through him to love us. And Paul says, so we keep on preaching. We keep on, keep on. And the Satan laughs at us, but God is more powerful than the devil. We pray against him, and we come against him in the name of the Lord. The blood of Jesus covers us from all sin. 
and we tell the truth. God is here because he loves you. He wants to set you free. He has the power to release. We believe in him. He will take you from the bonds. He will set you free. Yes. God loves each and every one of you died. Well, he says life and death and blessing and cursing. But he says choose. Choose life. You can choose Jesus or you can choose the devil. You can choose the, you know, drugs and alcohol. You can choose anything that you think is going to help you feel better. But it doesn't work. The blood of Jesus works. It's covered my sins. The blood of Jesus me. works. No matter how sinful we are, from the gutter to the uttermost, God Ooh, is able Jesus. to save. And he's willing. He's calling for you now. In the future, if you say, why didn't somebody tell us about it? Well, God is telling you now. He's speaking to you. He spoke to Nicholas. He's speaking to me. God loves you. And if we hear his voice, if you hear him this day of salvation, this is the day you can be saved. God will save you from all wrath. He will provide your needs. He will protect you. He will stand for you. God, before you, who can be against you? He has spared not his own son, but gave up for us all freely. How shall he not with him also give us to Jesus Christ our Lord? He will bring us to the very end. He will heal us. He will be with us. He doesn't promise us an easy life. It's a game, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death will turn no evil. We walk through the valley. We don't stay there, and God doesn't leave us. He doesn't take us away but he pulls us through and he covers and he protects us no enemy shall stand against us and 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 increase nothing can happen to us that god doesn't allow we pray for jesus protection on everyone we pray for you now lord for everyone here for their healing spiritual healing because their eyes may be open to see you jesus Thank with the you, blood lord. and the power oh lord let it rain let it rain let your spirit come down now oh god we pray in jesus name amen that's the death.